What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're going to discuss The Inhumans Season 1, episode titled The Gentleman's Name is Gorgon. Honestly guys, I didn't even take notes for this episode. I didn't take notes and I fell asleep a couple of times in the middle of this week's episode. So, we're just going to go through this. I'm going to do it completely off the cuff with the stuff that I remember from the episode. So this might be a weird review for me. But anyway, careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with the Inhumans. And if you care about spoilers, uh, you've been warned. Let's get into it. One of the positive things I've noticed about the Inhumans is just how beautiful the scenery is, the backdrops. Everywhere they go seems to be a very attractive location with a lot of history. They even name drop stuff. You know, uh, Young Sawyer from Lost, as we see in this picture here with Crystal, their entire time together has literally been going from landmark to landmark to landmark. Uh, just looking attractive in attractive places. And that's really what it is. So in that aspect, yeah, I think those those are beautiful elements of the series. If the series were like a travel series, like something you would see like, you know, House Hunters International or something, but it's not. It's a show that really needs characters to be bigger than these elements of just being attractive in attractive locations. And that's really, we're not getting that from Crystal, Young Sawyer, his ex Val, I guess is her name. I don't, I don't know. Just this whole situation with them really drags the episode down for me. And I, I don't think that, uh, I believe her name is Isabel Cornish, I think is the name of the actress that plays Crystal. Every week, it just get reminded just how bad she is in this role. I don't know if she's a bad actress, and I know I've probably said that before, but I, I just don't think she's right for this role. And to continue on with my problems with Crystal and Young Sawyer from Lost, um, the plan this week was she wanted to attract the attention of the royal family. So they come up with this idea that she's going to control lightning and make it strike to get their attention. Okay, fine. I think it's a ridiculous idea, though, considering that uh, young, so I think his name is Dave. I may be wrong because I think I heard it this week, but Dave or young Sawyer from Lost, instead of going, Hey, why don't we pick up a paper or check the internet for any kind of crazy stuff that might lead us to your family? Yeah. Let's just go cause a lightning storm, which is totally an excuse for them to go to another scenic location. And there was a situation earlier in the episode where Dave's ex-girlfriend's talking to Crystal and saying, Hey, you're stressing out Lockjaw. He needs to rest. You keep doing all this stuff with him and he's not going to get better. And Crystal's like, it's my dog. And I know what to do with him and I can tell if he needs rest and blah, blah, blah. Like she's totally like going back and forth with this ex of Dave's. We'll just go with Dave, I guess. Um, and then as soon as she walks away, Crystal tells Dave, but yeah, she's right. Lockjaw is stressed out. He needs rest. So why were you arguing with her? What was the purpose of that entire scene? It's just... This is so bad. It's really, really bad. And for me, the only thing that made this week's episode even slightly bearable was Medusa and Maximus. I feel like those two characters are the ones that like keep me coming back to the show because I feel like I would have bailed already. Honestly, I feel like I would have bailed already, which is crazy because I love the MCU, but this show is just not really what I expected. Um, Black Bolt not talking is really starting to grain on me. It's really getting on my nerves now. Um, the whole sign language thing would be great if everybody around him knew, but since that would make it impossible for us, the viewers to understand what he's saying, because he created this sign language for himself for the show and they would have to do subtitles. Medusa has to literally speak all of his lines, giving her double duty in the, in the lead role, basically, because it's hard to make Black Bolt the lead character when he has no presence. And he really doesn't. And Medusa even says to him in this episode, or it might have been a previous episode, but she says something along the lines, I need them to see you as I see you. Um, and I'm just like, ah, that would be great if we could actually hear what he's thinking, which I think would have been a more interesting way of using this character. I love the sign language aspect, but the problem is it doesn't really make any sense that no one else in Adeline can understand what he's saying. That That's a little strange to me. That he, everything he has to do, he has to speak through Medusa on screen, including what he's thinking. Because in the comics, you know, you got thought bubbles, you got text boxes. But here on the show, you don't have that. So he's, he just got a paycheck for standing around, really. That's pretty much what he got. And I finally decided I hate the character of Oren. I hate the way this character is portrayed on TV. It's not because she's not comic book accurate. That's not the problem at all. The actress playing this part is bad in this role. Just like a lot of the characters 
on the show. A lot of them are bad in, in their roles. There's just a couple of them that are pretty good. Um, but she's really bad. She's supposed to be this commanding force. And in this week's episode, all of her lines that she delivered were, they're like remedial, like acting school stuff. Like it's something you would see in a commercial or like a supporting actor. Like you wouldn't put someone like this in this role, in a role that, that demands her to command people underneath of her and have such a unresolved demeanor, which is kind of how she is in the show. And um, I just don't like her at all. I think she was a bad casting. I think a lot of characters on the show were poorly cast now that we're a good way through the season. And at the beginning, I thought that they were all pretty good. But as the show has gone on, I realized there's a lot of issues with uh, you know most of the characters on the show. Oren being the biggest one for me. So we should talk about Gorgon and address once again why Scott Buck is the absolute wrong person for this series or any comic book series, in my opinion. Gorgon has been a character that has been mishandled since the very beginning. We got a glimmer of hope from him in some flashbacks. And there's a couple moments in combat scenes where I thought he was okay. But um, the iconic goat legs with the hooves, we get to see them in short scenes here and there. But on Earth... He's wearing boots. Not only does it physically not make any sense based on the way his body is designed, but it also doesn't make any sense in terms of he wasn't hiding them from anybody that didn't already know that he had these legs, which is clearly about him having to walk around in that terrain with these prosthetics on and probably being expensive to shoot, you know, to take the time to shoot it. So they just like just put on pants and boots and call it a day mishandled completely um not only his height changes in scenes like some of the scenes he's like two or three feet taller than certain characters and then other scenes he's like just a little bit taller than most of the characters just poorly mishandled completely and this week they decided they were or scott buck decided they were gonna you know terminate another member of the royal family we lost triton within the first five minutes of the first episode because they didn't want to do all that makeup and all these underwater shots, you know. People keep saying he could come back. And yes, I mean, you're right, he could come back. But other than mentioning him maybe twice in this entire series, there's been no indication that Triton is going to come back and have anything to do with the show. But the stuff with Gorgon is he supposedly was trying to save the rest of the royal family from Mortis, who yet again did not want to be captured. I don't want to be locked up. You know, wisecracking Mortis, who acted, you know, acted like a human but he wasn't <laughs> anyway. So Gorgon supposedly gets terminated. He gets crushed under this building uh, in a fight scene with Mortis. And I'm just like, really? We've lost two very important members of this team. What were we going to do in season two at this point? Like, what were we going to do? I mean, yeah, I give them credit for, you know, not making every character invincible, but you couldn't maim them or seriously hurt them. You literally had to like, you know, take them out of the show. So yeah, not happy about this. I think this is really stupid. I think it's just another budgetary thing for the show where we go back to what I was talking about earlier about the scenery in Hawaii. And I feel like they paid so much money to film on location in these beautiful areas that and Lockjaw's CGI, there was just no money left for anything else. I won't be surprised if when the series ends, we find out that there was a lot more money lost than we think, because I feel like there's going to be, somebody's going to have some explaining to do with this. But uh, yeah, this was absolutely stupid to get rid of Gorgon. I want to wrap up my review talking about Maximus. I have a couple things I want to talk about here. Number one, we find out from Declan that he's the one that's been bankrolling all of his research, which is weird to me because it seems like such an odd thing to just spew out here at the end of the series. We had no indication that Maximus had a bunch of money on Earth. And you would think if he was able to transport stuff back and forth to Earth so easily, he could have amassed an army on Earth that he funded to bring into Adelin to take over the city. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he had all this money to, to fund Declan, couldn't he have paid mercenaries with weapons to come into the city and assist him? Or he could have left the city anytime he wanted. He has the means to teleport back and forth. So I don't really understand that, that issue with the show. Like, I don't get that. And the other thing is, I do remember a couple episodes ago, I want to say it was the Medusa episode, when he disbanded the genetic council. Didn't he take the Terrigen crystal and go to the Terrigen room and uncover the crystal like he was going to use it on himself? Wasn't that the whole point of disbanding the council so he could try to do that? 
But there's been no mention of that at all. And my biggest concern with Maximus at this point is what kind of finale are we going to have with him? Like, it seems like most of the people in the city, with the exception of just a handful of guards, um, they don't support him. There's a huge divide in the city. Uh, so we're going to get uh, Black Bolt, Medusa, Crystal, Karnak, and Lockjaw all back in the city to face off against a human character. Which is why I have a big fear that the Terrigen Crystal is going to turn him into some sort of like uber inhuman. That's that's what I think is going to happen. Because otherwise it would be a very boring finale since he's literally the only antagonist against like a whole team of characters and he has no powers. So I don't foresee a very exciting ending. I think it's going to be a very predictable ending. Um, and I think it's going to be unsatisfying to be completely honest. And also I thought about something here. I, I do want to bring something up really quick before we wrap this video up. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I thought it was absolutely hilarious when Medusa said that Karnak was the best fighter in all of Adeline because Karnak has been beat up and stopped by tons of humans. He's been tied up. He's been captured twice, at least by, by different humans and it's like, okay, great. He doesn't have his powers, his precog weakness ability. Um, but that shouldn't take away from his combat abilities. Like he should still be a skilled fighter outside of that. Because inhuman physiology makes the royal family or any of the inhumans from Adeline slightly more physically perfect than an average human being. Which they've never really addressed that in the show. I think we saw Medusa jump down, you know, a couple of stories. She said she could run faster. So they've kind of hinted to, hinted to it, but they haven't actually addressed it. So I just find it very strange that they would say that about Karnak, but Karnak has been no better than like just any average martial artist on any of these shows. I could see him being beat by everybody: Iron Fist, Daredevil, uh, you know, Black Widow, Captain America. Um, Quake, I could see any of those people beating him in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and he's supposed to be the best fighter in Adeline? I don't think so. I'm sorry, guys. I really didn't enjoy this episode of The Inhumans. This is like, it was really bad. Like I said, I fell asleep a couple times watching it. I didn't bother to take any notes. Um, there was just a lot of stuff that bugged me, and it all kind of accumulated into this episode. All the scenery shots that seem like it's just a sort of travel guide for Hawaii, um, they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I think they're absolutely beautiful, but it's more like they're just going from scene to scene to scene. Look at this beautiful place. Look at that beautiful place. There's a lot of things that didn't make a lot of sense. The acting has been really like in this episode, it was particularly bad. And it really, once again, made me question the casting of the characters on the show because Maximus, Medusa, and sometimes Karnak sometimes are probably the best three on the show, in my opinion. Uh, Black Bolt, I mean, he doesn't do anything. He just kind of stands there. And I mean, it's not even like he's like, you can't hear what he's saying. You can't understand what he's saying unless Medusa translates it. And it's like, it's, it's apparently a made up form of sign language. I took sign language in high school and some of the symbols he's using and some of the things he's using look familiar, but he said in an interview that he created most of that from scratch. So if you're watching it, even if you knew sign language, you wouldn't understand what he's saying because it's a completely made up thing. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. The death of Gorgon, the death of Triton, just, I don't see this show leading up to a big impactful finale. I found the flashbacks from the last couple of weeks far more interesting than the actual stuff we're seeing. So, yeah, I'm going to give this episode a 3 out of 10. That's being generous, honestly, for me. That's being generous. This is probably the single worst hour of superhero television I think I've ever watched. I, it's really that bad. And it pains me to say that. I have to remind you guys every single week. I wanted this show to be good. I did. I love Marvel. Love the MCU. This is just a huge mistake I think some people from some executives from IMAX came out. I think it was IMAX. I'll talk about it on Monday's rant and preview, but they came out and said something about it being a huge disappointment and that it's hemorrhaging money for them. So 
I think it's safe to say it won't get another season. And I don't think we'll ever see any tie-ins. There, there was a there was a funny tie-in to Thor in this episode. I believe Crystal made a reference to the God of Thunder or some something along those lines. Um, I don't know. It's a waste, guys. I would not... I would not suggest this episode to anybody. Um, so what did you guys think of the humans this week? Did you guys like it? I'm sorry to be so harsh on it, but when I fall asleep watching a show more than once, um, that's not a good thing for me. It's just not, especially when I was looking forward to this episode, uh, to find out some of the stuff that we've been watching the last couple weeks. And then it just kind of went for me. So three out of 10 can't give it more than that. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will catch you guys later. Hey guys, Eric here. Hope you enjoyed my video. If you want to become part of the Ericverse, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment on this video. All of my information is down in the info box, all my social links, my Patreon, all of that good stuff. Join the community, become part of this little world here on YouTube, and go ahead and check out some of my videos over here. I got some great content if you want to keep exploring my channel. Thanks again. Take care.